Praise God. The rise of the remnant. The rise of the remnant. That's the subject we have been on. And you will hear it throughout the, the year as we continue. The objective today, however, uh, as we continue our prayer and fasting is fast with exousia. And rise with dunamis. You all, you all kind of like that, don't you? Yeah, well, so do I. Because God is saying to us, as we fast with the authority he has given unto us, we have access to his throne. We have bold access to his throne. Are you with me? We are authorized to pray and fast and literally do it unto him. Go before him. So he says uh, in the Greek, exousia means authority. You fast with the authority. And in the Greek, dunamis means power. You will rise with power. Are you with me? This is part one. Remember we dealt with mountain remover. He says, if you say to the mountain, move from here to there, then what? It shall be removed. But then he said, but this kind, this kind does not go except by what? Prayer and fasting. So we are fasting for those of you who are. And if you haven't started, you should. My life has been transformed again. Again, I tell you. And you talk about restorations, things that I have not even yet prayed for come in. Restoration. I don't even know if you all can handle my testimony. Jealousy is like on the witchcraft, but I'll tell you half of it another time. Praise the name of the Lord. So we're going to fast with exousia. Say that with me. Fast with exousia and rise with dunamis. Come on, say it. Fast with Hallelujah. That's right. We are fasting with the authority that we have been given. And we're going to rise with the power that's been released to us by our God, our Savior, our Lord, our sovereign King. Are you with me, somebody? Hallelujah. Praise God. So Father, I thank you. I thank you for what you have already done through this prayer and fast. I thank you for what you're doing and with great expectation, God, for what's to come. You are God all by yourself. We are expecting, hallelujah, to see all that we have been praying for and beyond that, oh God. Even things that we are yet to pray for, we are expecting to see father in the name of Jesus father our expectation oh God is on the rise because you are the same yesterday today and forever amen amen praise God so question is it necessary to fast absolutely yes fasting propels you into a state of self-denial it literally pushes you into that. You cannot fast and pray and still be haughty and high and mighty and prideful. It is impossible unless you're doing a fast that God does not receive. Are you with me? So according to Luke chapter 9, let's look at Luke. Chapter 9 verse 23, it says, Then he said to them, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. And take up his cross daily and follow me. There are times when you are going to be dealing with things daily. You take up what you are called to bear. And you stay before God. You run after God. And watch God take care of you in the midst of it all. As you deny yourselves. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8 says... But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the Enochs, the Eunuchs, sorry, Enochs, Eunuchs, I apologize, of the Eunuchs, that he might not defile himself. This young man got the revelation from a very tender age about the power of fasting, the results of fasting, and the authority that he had to fast. Let me tell you something. To tell the king or to send a message for a king, to tell the king you don't want his food is an insult. But because, hallelujah, of the exousia 
that was in Daniel. He was able to accomplish that which he set in his heart to do and rise with dunamis. Are you with me? I'm here to encourage us and to remind us about the importance of prayer and fasting. I know some of you are struggling, but that's okay. Keep pressing. Keep pressing. Some of you did half day, one day, no day. Keep pressing. Those of you who did no day, you need to do something within per day, something. <laughs> Breakfast self. Just start. And God is going to empower you to continue. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So fasting ignites the Holy Spirit to quicken the word of God in our hearts. Daniel was quickened. He knew there was much ahead. So he had to be empty. He had to be clean. He had to be pure. So the Holy Spirit helps us. It quickens the word of God in our hearts. The truth will become more meaningful to you and more effective when you pray and when you fast. When you fast and when you pray, you, you are restored to the place of your first love. Do you, how many of you remember when you first accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? The excitement, the zeal. Man, you just love God. You want to tell everybody about God. And then life happened. Fasting and prayer helps to take you back to that place of your first love. Where you still have the excitement in the midst of all this chaos that's happening in the world today. You still have that excitement to tell someone that Jesus loves them. That he cares and that he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that they may ask or think. We need to come back to that place. We need to hunger and thirst for more of God and his revelation. God reveal yourself to me. At a greater dimension. That should be our cry. So transformation and transition becomes imminent. You must transform. The metamorphosis process is more evident when you're fasting. People are confused. When they look at you, one minute you're looking like a caterpillar. Next minute you're looking like a butterfly. When they look again, they're seeing an eagle. Mm. And they're trying to figure out what's going on. The transformation and, and, and the transition becomes imminent. You must change as you pray and fast. We fast with exousia and we rise with dunamis. In both the Old Testament and the New Testament, fasting was a required discipline. It was a required discipline. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse, uh, verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 9, sorry, verse 9. It says, When I went up into the mountain to receive the tablets of stone, the tablets of stone, the, the tablets of the covenant which the Lord made with you, then I stayed on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. I neither ate bread nor drank water. Here it is Moses wanting to hear from God, wanting directions for the people of God. He knew that he could only get that from God. He went to a high place, a lonely place, a place where he could be hidden, where he could just seek God's face. But beyond that, there was no bread and there was no drink for 40 days and 40 nights. People, we could do 21 days because you still have your nights. We have to learn to fast with exousia and rise with dunamis. But it takes, it requires that type of sacrifice. Acts chapter 13 verses 2 to 3, it says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to Barnabas. And Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed. 
and laid hands on them, they sent them away. We saw in the Old Testament, Moses had to fast and he got significant results. He got the tablets and all the instructions from God. And here it is we are seeing in the New Testament as we look at Barnabas and Saul, they, they were fasting, they were praying, hands were laid on them before they were sent out. Even in the sending out, fasting and praying is necessary. Are you with me somebody? Let's look at Jesus in Luke chapter 4 verses 1 to 2. It says, Then Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Let me just pause there for a second. While you're praying, while you're fasting, or even before you start doing it and the thought is there, you verbalize it, you begin to be tested. You begin to, the, the trials and tribulations are intensified. In this case, Jesus was Jesus. He was about his business. And yet, uh, it is saying here that he was led into the wilderness by the Spirit of God. There are times when God will allow you, hallelujah, to go through a kind of wilderness experience because he wants to unearth some things on the inside of you. You don't know what's happening. You can't understand why it's happening at all times. But there are times when the spirit of God allows the thing. Let me read it again for you. Apparently you're not seeing it. You think I'm making it up. Then Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit returned from Jordan and was what? Led. By, he was full and he was led. He was full and he was led. Led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. A wilderness is not a nice place for a human being. And on top of that, he was tempted for 40 days by the devil. Now, I, I kept hearing that Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. But then the Holy Spirit highlighted to me that on top of that, being hungry, your body is failing you. Being tempted by the devil. And you know, the devil don't tempt in no petty manner. He comes with full force. And he comes when he believes you're at your weakest point. You see, there is a uh, concealing to be revealing kind of situation with us. When we are praying and when we are fasting, it looks as though physically we are shrinking. Our body is, is, is transforming. Weight is being dropped off. You're starting to see the cheekbone that you didn't know you had all the time because of all the cheeks that were in the flesh that was covering it. And you look as though you are dwindling and people, you know, people like they are just on assignment. Oh gosh, how are you looking so good? How are you looking? You're looking dry. That's okay. Say yes because I'm in the wilderness. But I'm about to come out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I come out, I'll be stronger. I'll be wiser. I'll be better. I'll be more resilient. Fasting is necessary. You see, I'm fasting with exousia because I'm about to rise with dunamis. So being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days, he ate nothing. And afterwards, when they had ended, he was hungry. And I'm like, do, am I to understand that the intensity of the hunger only came after? Because it says after this, he was hungry. It could have been that, yes, as his body was going through the transition, that he was hungry. But it's only after the magnitude of hunger came upon him because mission was accomplished. Do you, do you understand this? Your first day is like, oh my God, save me, keep me. God, I don't want to die. Third day, you're saying, God, I repent for everything that I've done and everything that I might do. Keep me, Lord. But the third day, every billboard sign that you see with a restaurant sign on it or any kind of food, it looks edible. Hallelujah. By the fourth day, you're crawling a little slower. You don't want to look at your refrigerator. As a matter of fact, you prefer to stay out of the kitchen. By the fifth day, I said, Lord, is this you? 
By the sixth day, which represents man, you decided, look, I don't know if it's working. I'm not seeing anything yet. Hold on a little while longer. Seven is completion. And eight says new beginning. Hallelujah. And nine, you're going to strive. Hallelujah. And keep that momentum. Hallelujah. Ten is wholeness. So things are on their way. Don't you dare stop. Don't stop. You're not going to die. It's just your gastric juices talking to you. Talk back to them with some water. Just wet them. Wet your inside. Every time you hear, do so. I know the sound by now. It's quite evident to me. But you shall not die. And if you feel too much of a pain, squeeze the area. You shall be released. Hallelujah. Listen. Fasting is a biblical way to truly experience God's humility and God's power. Jesus was humbled and he was Jesus. It enables the Holy Spirit to reveal your true spiritual condition, resulting in brokenness, repentance, and a transformed life. That's the power of fasting together with prayer. Fasting can transform your prayer into a powerful, meaningful experience. It can actually do that. Where you would have prayed before and you just prayed as a ritual. But when you begin to fast and you pray, somehow your faith is ignited. And you begin to see the formation of that which you're praying for. You begin to see the manifestation of it in the spirit realm. I know what I'm saying. I'm talking from experience. If you just, not just try it, do it. Fast. Pray. This kind does not go except by prayer and fasting. What is your this kind? Fast the thing out, man. Pray it out. Rise with, with dunamis. I really want this to sink in you. Because it's worth it. To pray and to fast unto God. If Jesus did it. I mean, come on. Come on. Jesus did it. 40 days. It means your body could actually go without food for 40 days. Now, don't start rebuking me. I'm just telling you, scientifically, it's proven that a human body can go with, uh, without food for 40 days. Do you, anybody want to try it? Somebody says, never. Yes, it is so. Jesus did it. Listen, fasting opens the doors to a personal revival. And by extension, a global revival. You begin to praise God. You begin to worship God. Your neighbors begin to hear. They start to tell other people, time you come in here, we want to know what's going on with you. It's like fire shut up in your bones. Because uh, somebody been praying. Uh, somebody's been fasting. Somebody's been before God. Hallelujah. I observe some of you today. Your worship is already, it, it, it has already taken another level. And it could tell those who are still struggling, but we won't pray for you. But some of you, you, your worship has already gone to another level. I'm happy that Elder Crystal heeded the word to fast and pray. And there's even a greater dimension to go, Elder Crystal. Greater dimension. Don't make me call the 40 days on you. Oh, she's calling on the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen. You receive revelation as you fast and pray. Things that you would have seen the word before. You looked at the word before and things came out of it. But when you look again as you pray, as you fast, you see your flesh is now submitted to your spirit man. So the spirit is free to reveal the hidden things, the mysteries of God. And you begin to see more. The vastness of your sight, everything has been increased. And you begin to see and you begin to get the revelation of what is really saying for now. In your now. Are you with me? When God releases a word, it's for now. It's for our now. Are you with me? He don't talk to your yesterday. He holds your yesterday. He requires you to let it go. But he don't talk to your yesterday. He talks to you now. Today. Are you with me? Jeremiah uh, 33 verse 33 says, Call to me and I will answer you. And I will tell you the great 
hidden things that you have not known. I am telling you, as you pray and fast, and as we call on God, he's going to reveal things that we are yet to discover, yet to become, to, to, uh, come uh, to the fruition of what he has already set for us on the earth. Are you with me? Matthew 6.16. Hallelujah to 18 says, moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites mm. with a sad countenance for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I said to you, they have their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face. It's obvious this is not referring to corona. He says, wash your face when you fast. Right now, we have to wash our hands. But the word of God requires us to wash our face because as much as we wash our hands, nobody's looking at your hands. They're looking at your faces. They're looking for the glory of God. They are looking for some kind of resemblance of light. You know, you see some people, they look real good in the natural realm, but they could see the darkness. And the place bright, 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 but yet still they look dark. God is saying, wash your face. Don't be like the hypocrites. Don't go telling everybody, well, yes, I'm praying and fasting. If you could help it, don't. Don't, don't, don't say it. Are you with me? He says here in verse uh, 18. So that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your father who is in the secret place. And your father who sees in the secret place will reward you openly. That's why when you see people being favored and blessed, and you, you don't know. You don't know. Like I told someone recently, there, there is a particular... Um, personal people in general, they like to tell everybody, I'm going on a, a seven day fast, I'm going on a 10 day fast, I'm going on a 20. And they're always talking about their fasting as though it's, it's you, you get to see them in a more spiritually, highly lifted, I don't know, something. That is not for anybody. If you fast one day or you fast 21 days, that's not about man, it's unto God. Man cannot give you results after you fasted and say to them, you, you know, that I, I, I have fasted. This is unto God. Many times I will do it and say nothing to this house. Unless we call a collective, a corporate fast. I must fast and pray. You feel I could come here every Sunday and release the word and just be dry, dry, dry? Have I been dry to you? And for those who might say yes, check your internal posture. Matthew 16, 16, when, 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 it is not an option. It is, an, it is a requirement for the kingdom citizens, for all the chosen stewards to fast. When, when, not if, if you should, when you fast, when you fast. Are you with me? So don't be like hypocrites. Adorn yourself. Shower. Do something. Look good. Smell good. No one needs to know. Are you with me? Don't go on your job and use this as an excuse. No, I can't, I can't take you on today. Now I'm fasting. What is that about? And that, that is your spiritual posture. Your, 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 your employer calls you. You don't know I'm fasting today? That is not of God. That's when you look your best. Because you're expecting results. You're expecting to rise with a dunamis. Are you with me? So some of you who have done that to your employers, come on, repent now. <laughs> don't put on sad continents. Don't disfigure your faces to impress men. In other words, don't contextualize in an earthly manner a spiritual activity just to appear holy and super spiritual in the eyes of man. Don't do it. Matthew chapter 4. Uh, Matthew 6, as it continues, look, your, your best so men would know. They, 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 they would not know as you look your best. They would not know that you're fasting, but they will know that you're in the presence of God. 
This is a private and personal matter between you and your father, our God. Are you with me? Your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. It is the same with giving. If you look at Matthew chapter 6 verse uh, 4. It says here that your charitable deeds may be in secret and your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. It's the same principle applies. God, re re God requires private offerings and personal sacrifices. Are you with me? So when you do this, God will allow the evidence of your sacrifice to become visible to everyone. They will ask you, what you're doing, boy? What you're doing? Anybody ever ask you that? They're about to. Because they're going to see it. Are you with me? If you want more. If you want your mountain to move from here to there. Then you need to willingly abstain from any natural pleasure. For higher spiritual enlightenment and advancement. And advancement. Are you with me? You can't be doing all manner of things while you're fasting. You can go after your favorite thing and say, well, I'm fasting this one thing, but that thing I still need to hold on to. Just give God, you see this wrongs, you see this time that we're in, just let go of everything. Just for this once, I beseech you by the mercies of God. It works. I'm telling you, it works. It works. We need to fast with exousia and rise with dunamis. Fast and expose your flesh to the real you, the spirit man. It exposes your flesh. And your flesh, you, you, your, your flesh must submit. You are a spirit that is functioning in a body on earth. An earthly experience for a supernatural being. That's what we are. And fasting synchronized with prayer helps to bring clarity to that reality. So we don't think so fleshly and we don't earthalize things. When it's a spiritual matter, we deal with it as such. When you're eating natural food, that's not a spiritual matter you have to eat. Are you with me? Whether you put the bowl or the... the play it to your mouth or you use a utensil, a spoon or a fork, what have you, but you have to eat. Are you with me? Fasting requires more spiritual activity than physical because the physical is simple. Stay away. Are you with me? The spiritual is get engaged. Engage. Track with what God has done. Track what he is doing. Stand robust in the spirit realm. Understanding that you're fasting, hallelujah, with exousia. And you're expecting, hallelujah, to rise with dunamis. After all has been said and done. Denying your flesh ignites and excites the spirit. At least I got one, yes it does. It's not your worldly experience or your gifts talents and abilities to do many things that causes spiritual growth people are convinced that all the accolades to their name is is what puts them in a statue in a high stature in in the house of god or, or in in the kingdom that's not what it takes at all you must hum humble yourself and you must fast and you must pray you want promotion fast pray look at daniel he wanted things to change he fasted he prayed Jesus went 40 days, 40 nights. That's a long time. Moses, 40 days, 40 nights. No, he did not eat bread, nor did he drink water. Imagine that. They wanted results. Do you want results? This kind does not go except by prayer and fasting. Do you want results? I'm hearing all manner of things. The church today is, is this... A lot of people are struggling with so many different things. Well, let's get together, pray, and fast. Are you with me? You must also believe that God is, and he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Fast with exousia and rise with dunamis. Are you with me, somebody? Fasting compels stability. You find you're shaky and you're all over the place. Mentally, you can't even think straight. 
It literally compels stability. And God is our stability. Isaiah chapter 33 verse 6 says, Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times. And the strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Let me tell you something. The state of being in a firm and unwavering situation mentally, emotionally, or personally, it requires that intimacy with God. The Greek word for stability or being stable is sterizo. To make stable, place firmly, set, fast, fix, to strengthen, to make firm, to render con constant, confirm one's mind, establish. The thing is like a stake in the ground. Once you fast and pray, God be, uh, brings stability in certain areas of your life that's been shaky. But do you want that? Do you want that stability? Because if you want it, it's yours. I said, if you want it, it's yours. A double-minded man is unstable in all, not some, all his ways. You don't know if you're coming, if you're going. You don't know if, if you're going backwards, forward. If you're going to the right or to the left. Unstable in all. And the word is the word. Are you with me? The foundation of stability is synchronized with God's unchanging nature. God does not change. According to Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So this thing is synchronized with the stability. When you fast, there is a specific notification that is released to heaven that carries the message that you are ready, you are willing, and submitted to God's perfect will for your life. It transmits that kind of message. And the whole host of heaven is ready to walk on your behalf. Hallelujah. Push back the darkness. As God continues to fight for you, there's a synchronization that is absolutely necessary. And it happens when you pray and when you fast. Heaven responds. God is like, I finally got you where I wanted you. And you shouldn't just stop at 21 days. Every month take a day or some days as the Holy Spirit directs. And just empty yourselves unto God. Because we, be, we could become puffed up. We could believe that we are more than we are really. We are just everything in him. Outside of him, nothing. Try to stand on your own. With your intellect, with your experience, with all that you have, houses, land, car, what, you try to stand on your own. In the twinkling of an eye, it gone. God, are you with me? It states that you have to put God over all your situations. Over all. He is over all, but there is a putting that we need. In other words, we need to establish within that God is over all. He is over all, but there's an internal establishment that is necessary. You need to begin to see it. That God is over all. His thoughts replaces your thoughts because his thoughts and his ways are what? Higher you can remain stable in the midst of chaos as you remain hid in him, as you continue to abide in him, as you continue to fast with exousia and rise with dunamis. It is possible, hallelujah, to be steady while pressure is coming at you. It's possible to stand firm, hallelujah, while there's an earthquake, while the earth is shaking. The God in you is holding you strong, keeping you steady, causing you to stand resilient in the midst of it all. And he refreshes while he restores. We have the assurance in the word. And this is a very textual message. So I'm going to go through some scriptures. You got to take it as quickly as you can. Psalms chapter 1. Sorry. Psalms 103 verse 19. 
it says the Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. So you see, it's, it's, it's already set in there. He has established, established his throne in heaven. His kingdom rules what? Over all. So we're not guessing this thing. He is God over all. Are you with me? So Luke 9.1 says, Then he called the twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority, hallelujah, over all devils and to cure diseases. Dunamis, exousia was given to all his disciples. Are you a disciple of Jesus Christ today? Have you been called by him? Are you chosen by him? Come on somebody, are you? Then Dunamis and Exousia has been released. Second Samuel chapter 2 verse 32 says, For who is God except the Lord? And who is the rock except our God? <laughs> Ain't got no Lord except him. Ain't got no rock but him. Nothing that else that would last. Are you with me? 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 2 says, No one is holy like the Lord, for there is none besides you, nor is there any rock like you. Fasting induces faith and stability in the midst of spiritual assault. In the midst of it. In the midst of it. Fast with exousia. Rise. With dunamis. Are you with me somebody? Praise the name of the Lord. Let's continue quickly. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 13 says, Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. It's in the word. And this is possible when you pray and when you fast. Are you with me? Luke chapter 10 verse 19 says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Are you with me? He is the God over all and he gave us power over all. Isn't that something? Psalm chapter 62 verse 2 says, Oh, he only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Stabilization. Stabilization. Are you seeing what I'm seeing in the word? Psalm 62 two. He, he only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. You don't need any other defense. He is your defense. Shall I shall not be greatly moved moved Matthew chapter 18 verses 18 to 20 it says verily I say unto you whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever you shall what loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven power hallelujah dunamis the authority exousia you say it and it's done are you with me you say it heaven agrees you agree with heaven while heaven agrees with you there's an agreement that is so agreeable hallelujah there's no disagreement that can come and disagree with the agreement that's already agreed between you and heaven do you agree? Write it down. Praise God. Hallelujah. It continues in verse 19. It says, again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth, where? Where, where are we going to agree? On earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. If you just agree, just find one person to agree with you. Last week, God said something beautiful to me. He said a few things. But one of the things he said, he said, my child, be encouraged. There are more for you than against you. Man, that ricocheted up on the inside of me. And I just started to well up in the spirit realm. There is more for you than there is against, than, than against you. And then things started to stir up. And I started to focus on those who can agree with me. Hallelujah. He said, if one can put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand to flight. If one or two of you agree, 
if I could just get one more to agree with me that we will set to the mountain, move from here to there, and it shall move. He said, let's agree on touching anything. Anything. Not some things. Anything. Hallelujah. Matthew 18, 20 continues to say, for where two or three are gathered, there is a gathering that is necessary. Let me tell you something. That's why the fight is on so much to keep us separated. There's a gathering that is necessary. But not just because we like each other or we love each other. We have to gather in his name. In his name. He says, I am there in the midst of them. I believe he's here. Because I know for sure, at least I have one agreeing with me. I know that for sure. That he's here. And he will show himself strong. He will show himself as God, as he's accustomed. It's not in my doing, it's in his. Amen? 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5 says, For though we walk in the flesh... We do not war according to the flesh. You're talking about stability? You don't have to get all dizzy. You don't have to get discombobulated. You're coughing the devil here. You're kicking him there. It's in a stamp. You know, when you finish, you're catching cramp. It's not about that. Hallelujah. Your weapons are warfare, not carnal. But they are mighty through the pulling down of the strongholds. For the weapons of their warfare are not carnal, I said. They are mighty through the pulling down. Hallelujah. They are mighty through the pulling down. They are mighty in God through the pulling down of the strongholds hallelujah hallelujah glory be to God in the highest I'm I'm a little excited hallelujah 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 uh, second Corinthians is me coming down hallelujah second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 says casting down arguments uh, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of uh, of God we feel we know so much mm, Lord help us help us Jesus casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing every hallelujah thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ we have to know our place bring your thoughts in obedience to Christ. Hmm. Let me continue with the word. Psalms chapter 40 verse 2 says. He also brought me up out of the horrible pit. I can imagine how Joseph felt. Out of the miry clay. Mm -mm -mm. And set my feet <coughs> upon a rock. Remember we saw earlier on, ain't no rock but him. So when he set your feet upon a rock, he could only be talking about himself. Hallelujah. He said he brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of a miry clay. Has he done that for anybody up in here? He set my feet on a, upon a rock and established my steps. Are your steps established? We are talking about stability. We are talking about fasting with exousia and raise, rising up with dunamis. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always. Mm. How many times? How many times a week? How many times a month? How many times a year? How many years? And I know what I'm seeing there. He said, be steadfast, stability, unmovable, resilient, Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Mm. Knowing, you got to know. Knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I like what you're doing. You keep your working. You're pressing. You're pursuing. You're not stopping. Because everything that is happening now is for us to stop. I'm not just talking Kingdom Restoration International. I'm talking the body of Christ. You look carefully. You look at the news. And you would see, you track. Everything that is being done is to stop us. 
They want you to sit at home and do a Zoom meeting. And the man of God said it so rightly today. It's not the same. Because it was not originally designed that way. That was not God's perfect intent for his church, for his bride. Fast with exousia and rise with dunamis. Fast and also gets you into the place of firmness of faith. The firmness of faith is stabilized as you fast. Your faith is, people wondering what's going on with you. You just believe. You have an apostle here standing before you. I just believe. There are times when things will come to shake, but still, the belief system in me kicks in. <sighs> Squares my shoulder, stand strong, and I just keep believing. You understand? Dipping is one thing. Dipping and staying down is another thing. Hallelujah. So be encouraged. Even if you're uh, a little bit, get your foot in back up. And you show up. You stand strong. You stand firm. You stand resilient. Keep abandoning the work of the Lord. Because you know your labor is not in vain. There is a reward. For those who remain steadfast. I said there is a reward. In the name of Jesus. Look at Hebrew chapter 10 verse 23. It says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. He who promised is faithful. His promises are yea and amen. They're not going to change. He who promised is faithful. Our God, your God, my God is faithful. Faithful. Check your lives. Has he, hasn't he been faithful? Isn't he faithful? But then you should give him praise and thanks for being so faithful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. You just got to believe. Close your natural eyes. And as you fast, Holy Spirit will begin to give you sight and insight. Things that you saw one way, you'll see it another way. Things that you did not see, you will see now. Are you with me, somebody? We walk by faith and not by sight. Psalms 46 verse 10 says, Be still. Uh, uh. There we go again. Be still and what? Know that I am God. I mean, what do you know? What do you know? Do you know that he is God? Are you steady enough? Are you stabilized enough? Are you still enough? Are you in his presence enough to know that you 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 know that he knows that you know that you know that you know that he is God? Because he is. Mm. He said, I will be exalted among the nations right here in Trinidad and Tobago. Among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. God gave me an insight uh, and a vision about KRI and regarding this nation. Let's just keep positioned in him and watch him. Let him do what he's doing. He's cleaning up. He's flushing out. He's, he's shifting. He's, he's sifting. You know, it, there's a sift and a shift. But that's all right. We ain't going to drift. We're going to stay steady. We're going to stay steady. We're going to stay steady. In the name of Jesus. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 17 says, That Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. That you be rooted and grounded in love. How they could shake you out of love? How they could shake you out of it? There's nothing that can separate you from his love. You're rooted and grounded in that, you know. It's not easy to root up love. Some people talk love. That's all they do. Talk it. It's obvious it's not rooted. You can't talk this thing. You have to just know it's inside here. And it flows unconditionally. And I make no excuses because that's how God loves. Unconditionally. It has to be in the core of your being. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 7. 
The Lord shall cause thine enemies to rise up against thee, to be smitten before thy face. So there's a reason mm, 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 for the insurrection. I take it some of you not following the news too well. Ah, uh, well, I can't trump that one. But there's a reason for the insurrection. If you notice the results, the enemy was smitten before the face. It was such a bite, it was such a, 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 an abiding kind of, you know. There was a reason God allowed the insurrection. Watch this. It continues to say in Deuteronomy 28.7. Hallelujah. They shall come out against thee one way. Mm. If you only know what's going on the inside of me. Whew. But flee before you seven ways. I got to say it with an accent. They shall come up before you one way. But flee before you seven ways. That's when you fast and pray. I said, that's when you fast and pray. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. I want to stick with the word. Because I want to say something. But I can't say something. Because if I say something, then I'll say something. Somebody will say something, then I'll say something. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. So it's either we believe or we don't. Because I have come to know that I cannot waver. I cannot be, well, God, I, you think you will do this? What, what, what you, you want to? No, no, no. If he said he will do it, yes, God, I agree. And I just wait and see him do it. That's the kind of faith. You need to just rest everything else down and just believe God. But with, without faith, it what? It is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. And he is a rewarder to those who what? Diligently seek him fast with exousia and rise with dunamis. It is possible. Fasting is a built-in stabilizer. I said it's a built-in stabilizer. Fasting stabilizes fluctuation in emotions. I know what I'm saying. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 25 says, When the whirlwind passes by and the wicked is no more, but the righteous, hallelujah, has an everlasting foundation. His foundation in moving. When you're rooted and you're grounded in love, I am telling you, you are unmovable because his love says nothing is able to separate you. Hebrews 10, 23. It says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. He's faithful. God sets you in your chirotic state, and he is faithful to fulfill his promises to you. What have you been asking for? What is your focus? I have shifted my foot. I mean, I thank God he has given me the ability to shift, you know. Like totally X off and just focus. I really thank God. Because I've also learned once you allow certain things to keep coming to your mind, it floods your mind and you drown your thoughts. The thoughts of God, they just drown. But when you're like, Psst. and you focus, <laughs> everything that's supposed to matter, matters. And what doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Are you with me? So stop looking at the emptiness in your life. Look at all that you have. Look at what you have. Stop looking at what you don't have. God said he will restore. So don't worry about what you don't have. He will restore. Some people are at risk of losing what they have because they are so focused on what they don't have. Focus on what you have. Focus can create beginnings and endings. You could focus on something and begin. You could focus on something and end. Total destruction. What are you creating by your thoughts? What are you creating by your focus? What will you do? Worry 
and experience chaos with bad results or pray fast in the midst of the chaos and experience great victory in Jesus. It's time to stand in your chaotic state. This is the opportune time. It's time to fast with exousia and rise with dunamis. It's time. And on that note, all rise. It's time. It's time. It's time to fast with exousia and rise with dunamis. Tell your neighbor, it's time. It's time to fast with exousia and rise with dunamis. Hallelujah. Praise God. Set your face and he will. Hallelujah. Set your love and he will. Psalms 20, 7 to 8 says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of our Lord. They have bowed down and fallen, but we have risen and stand upright. Set your love and he will. Set your faith and he will. Set your face on him and he will. This is the rise of the remnant. As we fast with exousia and rise with dunamis. Lift your hands all over this place. God will do whatever it takes to protect his image on the earth. God will do whatever it takes to ensure that his bride is prepared for his coming. It is set. I said it is set. I declare to you today, be restored. Be refreshed. Stand resilient. This day has no limits. This day has no limits. This is the rise of the remnant. Fast with exousia. Rise with dunamis. Pray, hallelujah, with perpetual faith. 